Good day and welcome to another episode of Caribbean Connect. I am Kimberly Ram Kalwan. Today I have with me President of Guyana, Dr. Mohamed Irfan Ali, and he's just one of the several heads of government present in Paramaribo, Suriname for the 43rd regular meeting of CARICOM Heads of Government. Welcome and thanks for joining us. Thank you. I'm pleased to be here. Thanks for taking the time from your busy schedule to be here. I know you have so much on your plate and uh, most recently you've been advancing regional food security and nutrition security uh, and you lead head of agriculture. Can you tell us a bit about what progress has been made on this committee, uh, especially after what uh, Ghana hosted in May, the Agri Expo? Well, we have made tremendous uh, progress in terms of achieving a 25 by 2025 target. This is not only a political commitment. This is a commitment that includes the farmers, the private sector, young people. So what we have done is that we have developed an overarching strategy that incorporates all the players and stakeholders within the region and in individual societies, individual countries themselves, the private sector, women, youths, the farming community, university students in, in, in some cases. And we have outlined a strategy that is measurable, a strategy that has very specific targets. And in that strategy itself, it outlines the specific actions that are required by each state in achieving a 25 by 2025 plan. Since uh, um, Diana, the Agri Investment Forum, we have had an Agri, an Agri Expo in Barbados. We have a continuation of that forum uh, on the 19th to the 21st in Trinidad and Tobago. And what we have seen is tremendous commitment from uh, the, the financing side in advancing the food security plan. An integral part of the logistics. And at this meeting, we are seeing great movement in uh, not only the infrastructure and the architecture to bring about the transportation plan and to action it, but also a commitment in advancing the work to get the financing and get this operational as quickly as possible. No. The third issue is uh, barriers within the region itself. And there is a clear commitment from all the leaders that the time for discussing and talking about these barriers is over. And we are now working on a strategic time-bound approach in the removal of these barriers. Now, all of this comes ahead after you all met with President, U.S. President Joe Biden at the Summit of the Americas in Los Angeles, where he pledged some $28 million for food security, particular for the Caribbean region. Uh, how does this tie into CARICOM's plans? I know you all, you've listed quite extensively. But this is a, financing is an integral part of the plan, but it's not only financing. It is how do we create sustainable financial model that speak to the existing need incorporate the future dynamics of food production itself. We have the issue of technology, technology transform, research and development, and importantly, how do we create a business model, an agro business model that incorporates young people and give young people that option and understanding that agriculture and food production is not a backward thing but it's a forward-looking thing, it is profitable, and it has opportunities for them to advance their own careers and advance a business processing model as part of it. So it allows us to bring along the next generation of, uh, of CARICOM nationals who will be part of the food production system. Important to that is ensuring our distributors understand that the drive to food production is not a displacement for them. But they have to advance their own business model now to be part of the production process, to be part of this process that continues to generate wealth for them, but create even greater synergies and linkages in their business model. Now, apart from agriculture, your country is high on the agenda for regional energy sustainability. Talks have also been mentioned on fertilizer production. And, and I know this requires a bit of the downstream sector. And uh, can you give us an idea how that has been coming about uh, and how your country intends to tackle this? Well, my country is not about oil and gas alone. Oil and gas is there now. It gives us an opportunity to get much needed revenue to build out the infrastructure of the country, to diversify our economy 
make every single competitive, and also to bring regional prosperity. If we are able to get enough gas to have a fertilizer plant, it goes to the benefit of the region, the regional agricultural system. But we are also a country that stores 19.5 gigatons of carbon. We can have one of the leading, most transformative carbon market agreement uh, anywhere in the world. So it is our energy plan is bringing the balance, understanding that the world needs transition, but there is an important and necessary place for fossil fuel as we move towards that transition. Let us look, not fool ourselves. We cannot, uh, we cannot lock ourselves out of the opportunities that this natural resource can bring to us. Climate change is also part of that agenda. And uh, I know you are championing the preservation of the Amazon a rainforest and maximizing its potential in the pharmaceutical industry. Care to share a little bit about this? We have always been a environment and we will continue to be a leader on the environment. We have, uh, a, you know, more than 85% uh, uh, forest cover. And just for an understanding of what this means, our forest is the size of England. We store 19.5 gigatons of carbon. Uh, it's uh, uh, 195 a uh, billion dollars uh, asset value you're looking at in an annualized way. So not only are we looking at the preservation of the forest, we are moving forward with our development based on a low carbon development strategy framework. In that framework, it speak about community enhancement, uh, community empowerment. How do we help the indigenous communities? How do we create this low carbon development model that look at livelihood option, that look at a blue economy, that look at uh, transitional renewables, that look at integrating the economic prosperity of with the development strategy of the country in line with a balanced approach with climate and energy. Thank you so much for sharing with us. Uh, all that is on the agenda this year. Thanks for taking the time. Thank you very that. much. And uh, I wish you well. And I think that an important thing that the, the media should focus on in the region now is how do we uh, monitor and how do we follow up on the, on the decisions that we make. I want to say one, one thing in closing. I am very optimistic about the future of CARICOM. I believe strongly that there is a renewed commitment on moving from, uh, from strategy discussions to strategy implementation and this is a good place to be and a good time to be in CARICOM. Thank you very much and stay safe. Thanks for being with us and thanks for joining us here on Caribbean Connect. <laughs>